Hello everyone, welcome back to another edition of the Velvet Lounge Life. And this is the final um, tour or view of the remaining stickers in this special treasure of history book. So we went through, I'm going to say probably 70% of the book. So the last 30% I won't keep you too long. There's, you know, some cool, amazing treasures in here and just things that are, that kind of blow your mind with the possibilities as to what you could do with them. Now, I had a couple questions, so I wanted to answer those before we get into touring this book. And yes, I did sort of fancy it up a little bit since this is like the final in this little tour. So one of the questions I had was, do I plan on using the stickers in the books? Now, in an upcoming video, which has not come out as of the time that I am filming this video, I do answer that question. So if you watch video number three, which is a tour of this book, you will get that answer and by now you have it because this is a future video and the final in the series. But I will skip ahead and say yes. Yes, I will be using the stickers. The reason why is I have um, two editions of the book that you see in front of you. And because I have two of this book, um, I will be using one of them. Using the actual stickers in them. The other one I am keeping and until I hopefully receive another version so that that one will go into my dressing room in a display with other special books. So hopefully that answer wasn't too long, but yes. Another question I had, <coughs> excuse me, um, I do answer this in a previous video as well which is how thick are the borders around the stickers. Okay, so it depends on the sticker. There are some stickers where there is zero border, and I will show you an example of a couple of those today, and there are honestly probably a good majority of the stickers where the border is at least, I'm going to say, two-tenths of an inch or so thick, and we'll even measure out one of those for you today so that you could see. So yes, the ones with a thicker border, I suggest that you sort of just trim it out. If you have a lot of detail, then yes, it's going to take more time. It's going to be a little more difficult to trim out, but choices, and you can also do something with color or even gold or silver copper leafing around the borders. So there are things that you can do to sort of like hide that border. Another question I had was about the size of the stickers. Awesome question because usually I'm measuring and showing you guys that and I totally miss that mark. I will do that today so that you can see how large some of these stickers are that do not fill a complete page. Obviously, if it fills a complete page from top to bottom, left to right, um, I do talk about in the first video, you know, how wide this book is. So that gives you an idea. So without further ado, let's remove some of our... Um, little accoutrements here and get into this book and I hope that you guys are having a great day so where did we leave off it's sort of like reading a book to a child or someone I love it so here we have and actually for measurement I am going to use this American um, silver half dollar or 50 cent piece so that you have like sort of an idea I also have a standard size gift card here so that you can get an idea as well. So for example, this sticker, it may appear bigger on your screen, but you could see that it is the size, it's a little tiny bit bigger than this half dollar. And then this kid in the bird costume, he measures about four inches 
at the longest points. And this guy, who I adore, this is going, I think it's a girl actually. Um, she's about four and a half inches. It's so cool because in the flowers, you can see there's like five more kids like hiding. So this is really kind of creepy in a way, but also very cool. Morel mushrooms. Can't wait until the early, early spring to go hopefully looking for some of those. A horse made from potatoes. Oh, he's right here. And we get into the letters again, the letter V. I happen to think that this is probably one of the prettiest alphabet pages in the book. The V for, I'm, I'm assuming this, I thought it meant violets, but these are kind of not violets. This one might be sort of a violet. Maybe it's a, this is a violet of a different variation, European or something. You have the volcano, all fiery. This is a classic um, piece that I've seen with like little cards, um, calling cards, greeting cards, etc. And then you have this vulture, Venus de Milo. And then we get into another favorite page of mine which is this one because of all of the literary references here. We have the little girl reading the book. She retired to the Society of Pages. As a child, the Society of Pages are really what got me through until I had my freedom. <laughs> and here we have this wonderful display with a triple or a trio of books. And look, newspaper tiny newspaper but she's reading it with her little bubby the book man Christmas number so this is a gorgeous page the beetle here is one of my favorites in the book this little girl or I think it's a girl with the butterfly wings which almost look like moth wings Phil Phyllis Wheatley absolute famous American poet and then we have this page which we get into some advertising you know how I like that now the arms are kind of weird holding this wheel with these fluffy poofy balloon sleeves and talking about balloons and of course you know, people who are into the study of bugs, which I think is called entomology. And I actually have a greeting card in my antique greeting cards that re have this image, exact image. The only thing is it does say Happy Easter across it. So this lets you know that this image has been used many, many times throughout the years. Now we're at W. This is absolutely stunning because of the color in it. It's just beautiful. I love the bright, bright red. And then we have a whale. And which whale is this? Supposedly Moby Dick, obviously. <laughs> he gets his revenge and he lives at the end of the book. Oh, spoiler alert. And then here we have this beautiful, I guess she's supposed to be the good witch um, as she flies by on her broom with what appears to be the sun because of the color that I believe that's what it's supposed to be. You would think it should have been the moon instead. And once again, more girls reading. <laughs> Notice that theme. Not a lot of boys reading, but girls reading in this book. And this actually says good luck. Don't forget to dream of me, which this says to my friend, but I, at first when I saw that, I thought Valentine, but don't think so. This is a very skilled little doggy. X, X marks the spot. And here we are. So what does this represent? Does anyone know? We could not figure this out. So please let us know in the comments down below. Obviously, X-ray. 
we believe, which seems to be kind of strange. And this would have predated any x-ray technology. So obviously this was an image that they found and they couldn't find something that represented modern day or even when it was first invented x-ray technology. So they use this, which I believe is something more of the Halloween variety that predated probably the 1900s. This probably is about 19, I would say 1830, 1840s. So no x-ray machines then. And this is another one. We did not know what this meant. So if you guys have a clue, please let us know. And the double X is here in America that, that stands for alcohol. So, if you don't want your kids to eat sugar, tell them there's alcohol in it. It's true. <laughs> and then we have this gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous color wheel. I love color wheels. I love prisms, color wheels, buttons, costume jewelry, you name it. Obviously, cool little cards and old vintage paper pieces, aka ephemera. And look at this rabbit or hair. This is actually hair and it's outlined in this beautiful blue. So here's a good example of where I can show you a border. So you would think the border stops at the blue, but it does not. The border around this one is a bit smaller, which is good. And I will show you the measurement here. So you can see approximately how thick it is. So there's definitely some girth to that that you would want to trim away. This easy trim, but if you're trimming something like this, you know, it's a little bit more complex because there's all the little nooks and crannies that you need to get into, but it's totally doable. I've done it. Something I thought that was super interesting is this crazy looking bug like insane and it has a skull in the middle of its back or what appears to be a skull and I was like hopefully I mean goodness is that a real representation of an actual bug that existed now or in the past and then we get into some beauty where we have this gorgeous girl who's sort of just slinking over this crescent moon of course, lots of floral representation. These beautiful fairies who are, once again, up to mischief, let alone what did he do? <laughs> he has time out in comfort and luxury. Uh, the three girls um, being read to by, I assume, this the oldest girl. And like I said, once again, lots of girls reading in this book, I noticed. So it'll be interesting to see like in the very, because this is book two, like in book number one, how that plays out. And then we have the letter Y. We did not know what this represented. So if you know, please let us know. And then we weren't sure what this represented because we saw a dancer, a ballerina, like anything that did not begin. Oh, yellow. There you go. I think it's a color of her dancing costume, yellow. Okay, so figured that one out, and yes. And then we have this page with what appears to be Little Red Riding Hood on the back of a wild pig. We just thought that was the weirdest thing ever. Like, super weird, but super cool, and I don't know if it's creepy enough for a ghoulish spell book, but imagination it works look at the I guess he's like a, what are they called a gnome or is he an elf or something and he has this beautiful big mushroom and O Z the final alphabet page or Z if you are European um, they pronounce some of the letters differently than we do even today in Europe. So it's kind of weird. I follow several European folks um, on YouTube, so I've heard them use this word. But here you have the letter Z. Uh, you know, that's 
pretty self, you know, zinnia, zebra. I assume this is sort of like a fan. So we don't know what this means, why it's here. And everything else, we can pretty much, you know, figure out what it is. Oops, I skip. Oh, so we get into the number pages. In this book, the number pages are at the very, very back of the book. This is absolutely stunning. And it has a bunch of Greek wording around it. Not Greek. It is um, Latin. Sorry. Latin wording around the frame. And let's see how thick that frame is. Okay, see, this is a great frame of the sticker because it actually had, like, the color here goes all the way out. I wish that more of the stickers did do this. But a large majority of them, they don't do that. This one is a very cool one as well because it's sort of in the cutout of an actual stamp. I do wish there were more stamps in this book because that would be super cool. <laughs> like, so, so cool. And then we have our little lovebirds. But you can see how thick their border is. So you would want to sort of trim them out and be careful of the little details. The little diamonds. And then we get into the number th three and four. Look at the four little doggies. Super cute. Can't wait to use that. And this is another one that has a great border on it because no work is needed. That border is perfect. And can, oh, I thought you could see where they sewed this in. We get to the numbers five and six. Oh, and let's see how this sticker is. Yep, see, for the stamps, they, I think this is a great job. I mean, look at how thick it is. It's still kind of thick, but I do like the fact that these have this decorative, like, border around them. Here is another gorgeous piece, classic art, and once again, an amazing border on it. But then you get to this one, which has a very healthy border around it. So as you guys can see, there's definitely some variations in these borders. So look at this one. That's very cool. Can you see it? Oh, there you go. It's a nice border. So if you have arthritic hands, you may just, you know, want to take note of that. However, you can use these whether thick or thin or non-existent borders as is. It's just, you know, a detail thing. I love this one. Again, as I've mentioned too many times, these gorgeous in-between pages. Then we get to the number seven and eight. Absolutely lovely details and gorgeous pictures here. And this is an octopus, so th these are its eyes, <laughs> not something else. And then here is another stamp. I could actually, I, I mean, oh, so many ideas, so many ideas. Let's see how many I complete this year. You can see the color around this, how thick it is. Is this, I think, Elizabeth? Let's take a look. Or maybe, oh, it's Martha Washington. There you go. I mean, all these old white um, ladies of that era, they do have this classic look when they get older, because if you were in fashion, you wanted to make sure that, and especially if you were wealthier, that you, you know, had yourself made up a certain way. So she does look like Queen Elizabeth and, or it could be the artist, like drawing people who look way too similar. And this is a very cool one, reminds me of 
Hocus Pocus, starring the wonderful, the fabulous, one of my favorite, probably top 10 people, Bette Midler. And so this one also has a really cool border because it doesn't follow the green of the page. It actually is the same color as the background of the sticker, which I like. And then we have nine and zero, or nine and 10. And so you have nine eggs, which is kind of weird, but then you have all these gorgeous little pictures down here, playing card. And then you have another playing card here. And there are other playing cards in this book. Here's one here. So at the end, they get a little wild with the playing cards, more stamps. Love, 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 love this. However, if you were to, and notice how the background is pink on this page, but if you were to use a sticker, you, if you're all about the details, you are going to have to seriously deal with the border because the border is incredibly thick. So you're going to have to cut out around all of these little itsy bitsy bits and pieces so that you really get something that looks like a higher quality um, piece of artwork when you use it in your projects. But I love it, it's gorgeous, it's beautiful, it's amazing. And then we get to the end of the book and this page is also gorgeous with a little elfin, like, it sort of looks like, oh, he's a fairy. The little, I know because he has wings. The little fairy guy at the end. Look at this gorgeous border. I'm like, you could use this in one of your journals or other projects that you're working on as well. So that is the end of the tour. And once again, when you go out and you're recovering books from, you know, that people don't want, look at the back pages, look at the front pages. These are totally usable and some of them will even be vintage and antique paper, which I use in my artwork when I'm making things. You can do the same and the quality of this paper in those older books are amazing. Like you can't put a dime on it. So thank you guys for tuning in to the Velvet Lounge Life and watching the tour of the Antiquarium sticker book, Bibliophilia. Like I said before, this is their book number two. And this one is a first edition published in 2021. This is the very first book that they published, which they published in the year 2020. And this is also a first edition. You can see that right there. And we will be doing a tour of this book next. But I would just like to give a round of applause to this book because they did such a great job on it. Love it. I can't even imagine how much improvement is in this book over what they did in their very first book. I will be, you know, at the end of that particular, this, the series, when I look at this book and we go through the tour, the flip through, I will definitely let you know which of the two are my favorites. If you have both of these books or if you've heard of them or if you've gotten stickers out of them and maybe you don't have the entire book, let me know which one is your favorite in the comments down below. So thank you so much for tuning in. Remember that your health is your wealth and without your health, you have absolutely nothing. So please take care of yourselves. Remember to subscribe to the Velvet Lounge Life just by clicking that subscribe button and also clicking the thumbs up and watching our videos is so helpful to the channel and it lets YouTube as well as Google know that this is content that people actually like and care about. So thank you so much and be well.